So uh, you mentioned the you know, African Academic Response Alliance, and uh, it it's just uh, something that was created even less than one year ago in December 2020, when the WHO African Office, together with a series of, uh, of partners, uh, had the innovative idea that uh, infodemic, uh, infodemic management response could have not been uh, achieved uh, and been effective if it was just um, a deployment of uh, individual agencies' response. So um, this uh, um, initially was uh, an experiment uh, that was launched less than one year ago. And um, if we start from, uh, I like to start from a, a quote from an ancient um, Greek tragedian, Aeschylus, which was saying centuries and centuries ago that in war, truth is the first casualty. And when we talk about infodemic, uh, info, infodemic about the impact of um, misleading uh, information, mis and disinformation on uh, public health responses, yes, we can say that uh, fact-based information can be the first casualty and can really hamper the deployment of uh, public health responses. So uh, one year ago, uh, WHO African Office uh, decided to put together a series of um, uh, agencies, uh, partners, uh, civil society organization, uh, on, based on the belief that, as I said, uh, that there was no uh, one size fits all uh, approach to counter infodemic um, and the spread of uh, misinformation, and that the only way to move forward was to bridge together uh, experiences, expertise coming from very relevant actors. So that's why WHO, UNICEF, UNESCO, uh, Africa CDC, US CDC, and also uh, uh, African-based fact-checking organization like the BAWA Africa Check and PESA Check were uh, invited to join this new entity. And uh, so far it's a piloting project that aims at really mm, make sure that the expertise, the synergies, the resources as well, can uh, be a higher impact and effect if they're shared and also if the, le if the learning are shared. So what we do today, we try to coordinate all the um, learning, but also all the different efforts to counter misinformation by the this different organization that you see on the right side of the, of the screen and try to build up from this uh, uh, expertise and to join effort to uh, counter uh, misinformation in a, the spread of misinformation in the African region. And one key component of our activities is to help countries to create their own infodemic management system, to help them to uh, deploy social media listening, to help them to uh, coordinate and steer with other partners, and to help them to really in, in, interact and engage in social media to inject fact-based in, information. Uh, the, the important experience that we, um, um, I think that we are building is that we try to uh, implement what is the uh, backbone of the infodemic management strategy uh, based on the four pillars of identify, simplify, amplify, and quantify, and try to uh, make them uh, real, becoming real operations on the field. And also see what we learn by not only implementing this at continental level, but also adapting this uh, at country level. And um, uh, it's important for me to remind the, um, the sequence of these pillars because these really guide us as uh, African Pandemic Response Alliance from the importance of identifying resources and uh, building up social media listening and monitoring system to uh, identify rumors, information void, uh, um, cons uh, topic of concerns that can uh, that will require a response from our side. Then, by connecting with the different agencies, uh, the fact checking organization, uh, USCDC, the WHO, we aim at uh, simplifying the technical and scientific based information and to translate into contents that can be effective on social media to really intercept the uh, ongoing conversation, to engage with the publics, and to be as successful as possible to mitigate or uh, reduce the impact of ongoing misinformation. To do that, we need to amplify the simplified information and we need to build networks 
and partnership with uh, journalists, with media, with fact-checking organization, but also with other organizations that by simply sharing on their social media channels, the same kind of content can really build up a, a wall of defense towards uh, the spread of misinformation. And the fourth and more, most challenging component for, uh, from our perspective is to be able to uh, quantify, to measure the impact of the um, activities and the campaign that we launched to understand what was effective, what was a failure, and possibly from failures to learn and build more successful action for uh, um, the second phase. As I mentioned before, social media listening is the starting point of, of what we do. And I want to um, highlight this point because it's from uh, these uh, activities that could, that is quite uh, sophisticated, uh, that we um, try to build a response in the African region. And um, uh, we implemented social media listening um, close to the launch of IRA by um, uh, starting using different kind of platforms. You have heard uh, many names during the, the previous cohort, like uh, Crowdtangle, uh, WHO Ears, um, TweetDeck, and, and many others. And on a daily basis, uh, we uh, monitor uh, the ongoing conversation occurring there. We detect those uh, trending conversation, we identify uh, rumors, and we try to identify those that are considered information voids. So those topics that uh, are generating fears and anxiety in the population, but that are still not being uh, filled by this information and try to intervene on them. And the result of this is what you see on the right side of the screen is a weekly infodemic trend report. We want to create uh, a, a tool, a product that we can share widely uh, every week with the main uh, rumors, the main concerning topics that we identified, but also proposing some easy to implement kind of action. We want to keep the format of the trend report simple so that it can be accessible, readable, by anybody within the region. And we want also to keep the recommendation, the information concrete, realistic, and easy to implement. So we want to have this tool, a uh, useful tool that can be used in different ways according to the context, based on the people who receive uh, the report and based on the specific need identified in a specific context. Here are four examples on how four IRA members use differently uh, our uh, trend report. So you can see uh, Africa CDC uses it to review their messaging while um, UNESCO distribute to uh, um, in, uh, implementing partners. So even expanding uh, the reach of this report while UNICEF use it to uh, generate and keep a dialogue with their health practitioners on the field. And we have discussed a lot about the importance of healthcare workers and making sure that at any level, uh, we uh, sensitize people about the importance to counter misleading information and the importance of infodemic management. And the fourth example is how Africa Science Media Center, so uh, a um, civil society organization, use it to uh, inform their network of journalists about ongoing rumors. So this, for me, is very important about uh, uh, the importance of not only focusing on which tool we use, which tool produce, but also about which uses, which different uses can be done about a different tool and how we can expand the, the uh, efficacy of a tool by just thinking how the different actors could use uh, the same body of evidence. Um, when we do, and, and we talk about infodemic management, um, uh, we, uh, as I said many times, we manage a lot of information, the one that we gather from social media listening, uh, the uh, information that we get from our technical expert, uh, the information that we exchange with fact packaging organization, but then what can we do with all this information? So that's why um, in, in March, uh, WHO, AFRO and the Afri African Pandemic Response Alliance decided to launch Viral Packs Africa, which is a new, complete new brand. It's a, it's a content uh, production platform and it's important for me to stress that it's an autonomous brand to really brand fact-based materials and production that we produce and inject on social media. Um, so uh, Viral Facts, it's a, 
we could call it, an, uh, it's a content production lab that it's open access to all the IRA members and partners, but also to uh, networks of journalists, to other civil society organization to uh, uh, share uh, and uh, make it accessible all the uh, uh, country misinformation production that we have produced so far. So that uh, IRA members and other organizations can adapt them, can add their logos and can use in their different uh, uh, countries and on their different platform. As you can see on the uh, right side, you see an example, and we use the language, the style, uh, the layout uh, that most that are most adapted to social media. And the effort is to translate the very complex information to something that can be uh, easily shared on uh, different social channels and that can be easily understand by different audiences with different level of background and, and, and instruction. Here you can see the open portal where you can um, access to, uh, and I will show you later, more than uh, 240 uh, pieces and production on many different topics uh, from uh, the banking, uh, misleading information about uh, vaccine and pregnancies to the bank, the, uh, the false claim about Luc Montagnier to uh, sharing um, testimonies from healthcare workers, um, COVID survivors to build up uh, confidence in a COVID-19 vaccine or to uh, create a um, uh, media literacy campaign. All this content, as said, are open and shareable by anybody, but the, the full, um, the, the original version of them are accessible by partners and other organizations that can adapt and can add their logo. So multiplying the, um, the dissemination of viral fax content. It, here is a snapshot about the uh, production and one of the weaknesses uh, that we face today, which is uh, the balance in terms of uh, language production. As you can see, unfortunately, the vast majority of our uh, production is um, um, in English and, uh, and in French and we have to improve in local languages. But we can see that the content is spread around 34 countries. And in terms of um, hard figures of engagement, um, the videos has been seen so far by, by more than um, 170 million, uh, million people. These videos, I said, these are products. So uh, the success of a product is how it is used. Here's an example on how uh, uh, one of our partners, which it's Ghana Fact, a very active and dynamic uh, fact-checking organization, uh, engage with us and we engage with them to counter the spread of a conspiracy theory that was generated by a local pastor that started to uh, promote one of the of those uh, conspiracy theories that we saw many times on, uh, on social media. Thanks to the um, Ghana fact uh, that spotted this uh, rumor going online, together with them, we uh, produce uh, some piece of materials that they have been able to quickly inject on social media. And according to what they told us, this helped them to reduce um, uh, the, uh, the virality of uh, this conspiracy theory, theory and also reduce the timing for uh, which this was circulating. So this is an example on how uh, uh, partnership, it's, it's a bilateral process that bring, bring advantages to both parties of the, of the partnership, to uh, Ghana Fact, the fact checking organization, and to us as well, because we have learned on how to uh, uh, better work with, with them. Another important um, element of what we, we can we can do is that we can try. We can try formats, we can try languages, and we, uh, based on the, the priority that we have. And in June, uh, one of the uh, tasks that we had was to help countering uh, online uh, disinformation that could have had an impact on vaccine confidence. So that's why uh, you see here, we decided to work on uh, experimenting different formats and different layouts and to um, launch um, a targeted campaign 
in a, a series of countries to uh, really target vaccine confidence. So how we build this, this campaign? Um, based on the information that we were receiving from the WHO and other organization, and also based on what you see on the right side of the screen, which is uh, the Facebook Data for Good platform. It's an open access uh, platform. Um, we identify vaccine hesitancy rate amongst different countries and also the main driver of these uh, reduced uh, confidence. And the two main driver were uh, the first one related to um, fear about possible side effect and the second one about an attitude of more wait and see uh, uh, the others getting vaccinated before uh, getting the jab. So we decided to tackle vaccine um, confidence in uh, the can those countries that we identify with the highest uh, rate of vaccine hesitancy. And we decided to build two uh, different campaign. One with the poorly, um, um, uh, purely produced viral fax materials. And another one uh, with, together with the um, Sachi advertisement agency. And for both this campaign, we conducted two uh, brand leaf studies, which is a, a, a Facebook survey system to measure if your campaign generated a lift, so uh, an increase in terms of perception, in terms of confidence, in terms of appreciation about a series of questions. In this case, the question that we posed to the audiences were about uh, confidence in the vaccine, importance about the vaccine, and safety about the vaccine. The uh, countries that we choose were uh, four uh, French-speaking uh, countries because we wanted to uh, tests uh, more in, uh, in countries where we were seeing that our activities were less effective. And then South Africa, Kenya, and Lagos in Nigeria, we want to also to focus on one urban area. Uh, the main takeaways that we um, had um, from these two campaign, one, the one with the such agencies that were, was using, um, how we can define them, celebrities VIP, like uh, sport champions, uh, famous singers, uh, comedians to support uh, vaccine confidence and they were the other one using either uh, WHO expert or more graphic materials. We conducted the brand lift studies and we saw that um, the, the, the lift generated by uh, the campaign using these famous people was less higher than the lift generated by the more simple content. We share this, um, this outcome and this assumption about whether you know, VIP kind of influencer could have been more or less effective than uh, community kind of uh, more micro influencer, community influencer. We share with other uh, agencies and with, with other organizations that conducted similar campaigns. And we saw that also other um, uh, entities experience something similar a reduced drive generated by famous VIP influencers. And the reason behind this could have been a multiple reason, but mainly um, le less trust on famous people that could have been perceived to have joined this campaign for commercial purpose, for individual visibility, for uh, political agendas, while macro influencers were perceived more closer to the community's more trusted source of information. In, in, um, in all our experience, the main takeaways that we uh, uh, identify and we are still a bit we can consider uh, in our first year of, uh, of life or activity is uh, the first one that uh, it's our mantra is to think as an organization, but act as an army of communities. So uh, alone by ourselves, we will uh, reach limited um, objective, but no steering and engaging with our partners, with allies, and building more allies, it's, it's crucial for all our activities. Social media listening um, has to be conducted with the knowledge and with the tools that, that we have. It's the first uh, uh, important point. We have to kick off, kick, kick off is, uh, as quickly as possible. And even if we are not expert in uh, data analysis, even if we are not expert in uh, using social media platform, Let's, try, let's start to do it. Let's start to get something out. Let's start to produce the first infodemic trend report because it's only by doing that we can improve and that we can refine this crucial component of our activities. 
the second point is to establish uh, and maintain network with tech experts and fact checkers, tech experts that can allow us to identify new and innovative platforms or tools or way to uh, understand, read or use data and fact checkers who are kind of sentinels uh, in the front lines in different areas and countries that can help us not only to detect rumors, but to reach specific communities and create WhatsApp groups to um, speed up the information sharing among all, amongst all the different allies. So to make sure that we can immediately engage with, them, with everybody. The other point is to map allies, but also enemies. Know your enemies, know who are the super spreader of misinformation, know who are the social media accounts that are uh, disseminating information and, and monitor them. On the other side, build alliance with, with more partners to re share resources, effort, even uh, financial resources to perhaps put together budgets and get um, um, a social media listening platform or to uh, produce campaign or contents. The other important driver that has already been mentioned in uh, other cohort is do not be scared about testing, failing, learning, retesting, uh, because this is this is crucial. Nobody has the um, uh, the magic sticks to know which content will function, which um, language and layout will function. It's only by doing, it's only by testing that we will learn and engage with community influencer. Do not hesitate to readapt content. Um, uh, People may be uh, stressed about uh, producing uh, something always new. We saw that many of the rumors that we uh, deal with are not new rumors. Some of them are recurrent rumors that spike times to times, and we may tackle them by reusing some of the materials and focus our energies for new production on something really relevant and really new. And the important thing is to be fa be fast. So that's why it's important to reuse content if you have it. In terms of language, we said that either you uh, talk with a, um, with expert um, profile, or you have to and you have to use colloquial, plain spoken language uh, and draw relatability. Uh, and this um, was more effective for uh, younger audiences, while well, um, in, in terms of using testimonial, uh, a mixture of um, influencer uh, is for sure the best approach rather than falling to the uh, mistake that you know, only notoriety, only visibility can uh, be a, a winning factor when uh, considering uh, the importance of, a, of an influencer. I want to conclude uh, my presentation with uh, a statement done by Umberto Eco, which was a famous Italian semiotician and, and novelist, uh, about a, a very important component, psychological component of uh, what we deal with. Um, and he was saying that, um, arguing about why co uh, conspiracy theories are so popular, he was saying that the psychology of conspiracy arises from the fact that the most evident explanation of many worrying facts do not satisfy us, and often do not satisfy us because it has to accept them. So this is for me, it's a kind of lesson that I bring with me every day I deal with uh, misinformation because the important thing is not only to uh, do social media listening as we do, but to, to listen about the fears of people, to understand that uh, um, there is a psychological dimension that is um, something that has to remain at the heart of what we do. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Liz, for uh, the opportunity that you gave to me. And uh, back to you.